so far we've looked at three different directional and motion sensors. Magnetometers, accelerometers, and gyroscopes. In this video, we're going to look at a sensor that combines all three of those sensors. These sensors are usually classified according to how many axes they measure. The sensor we're going to use in this video is a 9-axis or 9-degree of freedom sensor. Degrees of freedom is the total number of axes that can be measured by the sensors. For example, we're going to look at the MPU-9250, a 9-degree of freedom sensor that has a magnetometer, gyroscope, and accelerometer. Each one of those sensors outputs measurements from the X, Y, and Z axes. So there are a total of 9 axes, or 9 degrees of freedom. Let's get a closer look at the sensor now. Here's the MPU-9250 chip right here. The magnetometer, accelerometer, and gyroscope are all inside this chip. These other components are pull-up resistors, and the voltage regulator. Here's the VCC pin. The breakout board I have can take a 3.3 volt or 5 volt power supply, but not all of them do, so be sure your module has a voltage regulator on it before connecting it to 5 volts. Here's the ground pin. The MPU9250 can talk to your Arduino over SPI or I2C. Here's the SCL pin, which we're going to use for our I2C connection. The SCL pin also doubles as the clock, or SCLK pin, if you're connecting it with SPI. Here's the SDA pin, which we'll also use for I2C. This pin doubles as the serial data in, or SDI pin, for SPI. SDI is just another name for what's usually called the master out, slave in, or MOSI pin. The MPU9250 can be set up as an I2C master device, where it can receive and output data from another external sensor. The EDA pin here is the I2C master serial data pin, which would connect to the SDA pin of that external sensor. The ECL pin here is the I2C master serial clock pin, which would connect to the SCL pin of the external sensor. Here's the ADO pin. This pin is used to change the I2C address of the sensor. When it's low, or unconnected, the I2C address is 0x68. When it's high, the I2C address is 0x69. This pin also doubles as the SPI Serial Data Output, or SDO pin, which is just another name for the Master In Slave Out, or MISO pin. The INT pin is a hardware interrupt pin. It can trigger a hardware interrupt with the measurements from any of the nine axes. This is the CS, or Chip Select pin, for connecting it with SPI. This is the F-Sync pin. F-Sync is the Frame Synchronization Digital Input pin. You can use it to pass the hardware interrupt from an external sensor to the Arduino. These are the directional arrows to show you how the axes are oriented. They indicate the axes for the accelerometer and gyroscope. The magnetometer is actually aligned differently. If you look closely at the sensor chip, you'll see a small dot in the upper left-hand corner. The magnetometer axes are oriented like this in relation to the dot. This diagram is from page 38 of the InventSense MPU9250 datasheet. With the dot here, the positive z-axis points down. The positive x-axis points this way. and the positive y-axis points this way. Why don't we connect the sensor now, then we'll check out a sketch and get some sensor readings. We're connecting the sensor to the Arduino with I2C, so the connections are pretty easy. VCC connects to 5 volts on the Arduino. Ground connects to ground. The SCL pin of the sensor connects to Arduino pin A5 and the SDA pin connects to Arduino pin A4. I'm going to use a library called the MPU9250 library to program the sensor. You can download it from this link. 
Once you get that installed, let's take a look at the sketch. The first thing we have to do is include the library. We do that with hash include mpu9250.h. On the next line, we declare a sensor object from the mpu9250 class. We need to pass the sensor object the communication protocol we're going to use, and the I2C address of the sensor. For I2C, we need to put wire as the first parameter. The second parameter is the I2C address. We left the ADO pin unconnected, so it's low, and the I2C address is 0x68. If we connected it to 5 volts, the I2C address would be 0x69. In the setup section, we initialize the serial monitor, then we initialize the sensor object with the begin function. In the loop section, the first thing we have to do is get a reading from the sensor with the read sensor function. Now we can print those readings to the serial monitor. I'm going to print the reading from each sensor's axis on a separate line. This block of code prints the readings from the accelerometer. The accelerometer readings will be in meters per second squared. This block prints the gyroscope readings which are in radians per second. And this block prints the magnetometer readings, which are in microteslas. Before each sensor reading, I'm gonna print some text that describes what the sensor reading is. So for the accelerometer, I'm gonna print accelerometer x equals to get the accelerometer's x-axis reading, we use the get excel x underscore MSS function, which is called through our sensor object. The serial print function lets you use a second parameter to specify how many digits you want to display after a decimal. For example, here I've put the number 2 as the second argument. This is going to print the sensor readings with two digits after the decimal. Now we're going to print the accelerometer's y-axis reading we print some text that says accelerometer y equals. Then we print the output of the function get xly underscore MSS, which is also called with our sensor object. I'm going to print two significant figures after the decimal for all of the sensor readings. So the second parameter here is two. Now we do the same for the accelerometer z axis. The gyroscope readings are printed in pretty much the same way. The only difference is the name of the function that gets the readings. To get the gyroscope readings, we use this function. Get gyro x underscore rads gets the readings from the gyroscope's x-axis. Get gyro y underscore rads gets the reading from the gyroscope's y-axis. Get gyro z underscore rads gets the readings from the gyroscope's z-axis. It's the same thing for the magnetometer readings. Get mag x underscore ut gets the magnetometer's x-axis reading. Get mag y underscore ut gets the magnetometer's y-axis reading. And get mag z underscore ut gets the magnetometer's z-axis reading. The MPU9250 also has a built-in temperature sensor. And we can print that reading with the function get temperature underscore C. Since there are so many sensor readings in this sketch, I'm going to print a line of dashes to separate the readings each time through the loop. Then I'm just going to put a delay here to slow down the output to make it easier to read. Okay, that's it. Let's see what this looks like on the serial monitor. I have my MPU9250 connected to my Arduino here. And the sensor readings are coming in through the serial monitor.
Let me stop the auto scroll so we can look at one of these. The three accelerometer axes are printed first. These are in meters per second squared. Notice that the X and Y axes are close to zero, but the Z axis is negative 9.16. That's the acceleration from gravity. The gyroscope's X, Y, and Z values are printed next. The sensor isn't rotating along any of its axes, so they're all zero. These are in radians per second. Now we get the magnetometer readings for each axis. These are in microteslas. Then we get the temperature reading in degrees Celsius. In the next video, we're going to look at GPS sensors. GPS sensors can be paired with 9-axis sensors like the MPU-9250 to get complete control of your project's location and orientation. The 3-in-1 Smart Car and IoT Learning Kit from SunFounder is a hands-on, all-included electronics kit that is perfect for anyone who wants to learn how to master the Arduino. The kit comes with an Arduino, 22 different sensors and modules, breadboards, jumper wires, and everything else you need to build a bunch of fun and interesting projects. Learn about robotics by building a remote-controlled smart car that can be controlled with an infrared remote controller or drive on its own and avoid obstacles or fall on a line. Learn about the Internet of Things with a project that lets you monitor the temperature, humidity, and light level of a room from an app on your smartphone. And build a plant monitor that tracks the temperature, humidity, light intensity, and soil moisture and displays it on your smartphone so you can keep your plants watered remotely. It's a super cool kit and I had lots of fun building all the projects in it. So click the link in the description below to order the kit from SunFounder.